All right, let's go ahead and keep this ball rolling with the American and single malts. My name is Peter Fasciano. This is my whiskey journey. We're going to head over to Waco, Texas to Balcones, and we are going to try their Texas single malt whiskey. Now, Balcones has an interesting story. This all started with Chip Tate. Chip Tate was the original owner and distiller of Balcones. They're going to expand, and he needed some finances. I'm going to link the article that I read uh, in the description below, so if you're interested in this, you can go ahead and give it a read. It's pretty interesting. But Chip Tate was the original owner and distiller. He wanted to expand. He brought in some investors, and whenever there's money involved, there's going to be a conflict. Not always, but most of the time, there's a conflict between the artist and the investor. And eventually, he was kind of pushed out, fired, and then the new... Um, master distiller Jared Hempstead, or the head distiller Jared Hempstead, uh, took over. Now, Balcones is in Waco, Texas. This is coming in at 53 ABV, Texas single malt. I don't see anything that talks about American single malt, but I think this is considered to be an American single malt. This is non-chill filtered, and this is all natural color. And the reason why I know this is non-chill filtered and natural color is because it says right here. So never chill filtered or colored. I don't know if you guys can see that right there. Never chill filtered or colored. This bottle is coming in at 60, $62 at the big box stores at BevMo or uh, Total Wine and More. Again, I'm from Phoenix, Arizona, so these prices are pretty consistent from place to place. They also make the cast strength one that's coming in at around $83. Now, my background doesn't help, but just take a look at this at this color. It's absolutely dark. Now, when I see this, I just instantly start thinking dark fruit. On the nose, I'm getting raisins. I'm getting um, like toasted caramel. Is toasted caramel a thing? I'm getting caramel. I'm getting toasted sugar. I get raisins, figs. All of those things are coming through. This is a big, heavy uh, whiskey. Let's go ahead and give it a taste. Yep, all of that's coming through on the uh, palate as well. I'm getting, I'm getting a lot of that ABV, that ethanol. That's up front. It just lights my mouth on fire. But as soon as you get past that, I'm definitely getting the burnt sugar, the caramel, the dates, the figs, the raisins. A little bit of malt, a little bit, a little bit of wood maybe. This is, this is really good. Of all of the American single malts that I've had so far, this is definitely the most flavorful, the most to dissect. This is, this is the one that to me is the most challenging so far. I'm gonna go ahead and add water to this and then talk a little bit more about the whiskey itself and see how water changes this or doesn't change this. This is SM20-1 for the batch. And the date was 422.20 when it was bottled. On the bottle, this says that it's certified Texas whiskey, but nowhere on here do I believe it says anything about American single malt. And after doing some research, it looks like there is a commission, the American Single Malt Whiskey Commission, that a bunch of distillers in the United States are a part of. Nothing is set in stone, I believe. There's nothing uh, that says this is what an American single malt has to be. But I believe this commission was formed so they can protect what it means to be American single malt. And the people that are joining this are in the consensus that in order for American single malt to be considered American single malt, I'm just going to read directly from my notes, says that it's made from 100% malted barley, distilled entirely at one distillery, mashed, distilled, and matured in the United States of America, matured in oak casks of a capacity not exceeding 700 liters, it's distilled no more than 160 proof or 80 ABV, 80% ABV. And then when you bottle it, it should be bottled at 80 proof or more. So that's 40% ABV. And this, if I haven't mentioned, is 53% ABV. So this is definitely one of the more ethanol forward, the stronger whiskeys uh, that I have reviewed so far. So with a little bit of water on this, I know what I'm, what's going to happen here. 
It's going to tone down the ethanol. It's going to give you a little bit more of an approachable whiskey, especially if you're not used to high ABVs. And if you're overwhelmed with nosing a whiskey, if you get it too close and you get that burn, your uh, olfactory bulb recovers rather quickly. Just smell your hand, reset, smell the, uh, the crook of your elbow, the crook of your arm. Your senses are going to reset rather quickly and you're used to smelling yourself. So once you do that, give it maybe, you know, 30, 40 seconds or so, and it should be pretty, pretty well reset. And then you can go back in. All right. Coats the glass pretty good. And that, uh, that finish didn't really seem to be too oily. I expected it to be because in the past it seemed to just coat over my tongue. And again, it could be the time of day. Every time you, you drink a whiskey, or at least it's been my experience, what you had before, the time of day, your mood, what you've eaten, uh, all this stuff kind of affects how you approach the whiskey. Yeah, at that time, it just opened it up a little bit more. I'm getting a little bit more of the wood in there, a little bit more floral. I still get those dark fruits, though. I still get the raisins, the plums, the figs. I still get that burnt sugar, a little bit of maltiness a little bit. But on that sip, I definitely got some wood. Not like wood, but I've, I definitely got like barrel influence. Yeah, that was interesting. So a little bit more about this and then I'll go ahead and wrap this up. If you can see the logo on the front of this, the logo is an artist rendition of the fault system. And they've taken the Scottish naming system for Scotch whiskeys when they name it after a place or a location instead of naming it after a person. I think a lot of uh, bourbons in the United States name it after people, but this, they've taken the naming scheme from Scotch. And I think the Scotch naming is present in the label because they spell it S-K-Y, whiskey, S-K-Y, instead of S-K-E-Y. It's a big whiskey. If you're not, if you're not used to high ABVs, you're going to have to tinker with how much water you add to it, or you're just going to have to get used to the, the, the high ethanol. I'm still getting stuck with picking out certain things like the, like the spices, the cooking spices. I can't pick out one individual cooking spice when it says sweetness or uh, orchard fruits or dark fruits. It's hard for me to pinpoint just one specific thing. I just get hit with this huge blast of dark fruit and that encompasses everything. The dates, the figs and the raisins and the caramel. They're all just kind of get lumped in together. So yeah, that's where I'm going to leave it. If you guys are digging this information, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. If you know somebody in the whiskey world that uh, is interested in whiskey, share this channel with them. If you do subscribe, turn on that bell notification so you'll be notified the next time I go live with the video. That's where I'm going to leave it. If you're interested in this one, pick up a bottle uh, because I definitely think it is a conversation starter. It's a good tasting whiskey. I don't think it's going to be a starter whiskey. Uh, this is something that you can probably put into a tasting lineup, put it towards the end so people don't get freaked out over it. And there it is. So enjoy your journey. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Strong but smooth, if that makes any sense. Man, I, do, I really do like that. <laughs> we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.